Welcome back to the Chaplain's Corner. If some of you were at All Saints Parish this weekend, you would have heard Deacon Rick Roeder's homily, and he talked about how we're only a couple weeks out from Lent. And I don't know what Lent has been like for you. I don't know what kind of tradition that you've received from your experience of formation in the faith. I know for me that Lent has always seemed kind of like a lot of things in the faith. It's There's a tradition, but it's I'm not really sure like what I grew up with, we didn't really have a, a, a great tradition. So we had something, it's like, okay, so we give up, I gave up ice cream. And I remember one time I gave up ice cream and the Schwann's guy, he knew that I gave up ice cream. So he gave me like a bucket of ice cream at Easter. So like Lent for me as a kid anyways, basically just meant give up one specific thing and just kind of focus on just that giving up. It wasn't really connected to like the virtue of sacrificing that for something else or, or what fasting really was. It was just like, give this up only eat fish on Fridays and then it's Easter, right? And then you have to wait a long time and you see purple at mass. But what is Lent really about? Like what is this process of prayer, fasting and almsgiving for in the life of the church? Well, here's the deal. Now the rector of Kendrick Lennon Seminary once told me, he told our class, he told everybody in a, for, a faith formation conference, he said, Lent is all about putting to death the deadly in us. So that might sound kind of intense, but putting to death what's deadly, but actually that gives us so much freedom in Lent because Lent is not just another opportunity to practice willpower Christianity. I think a lot of us think that's what Christianity is about. You just have to try really hard. You just have to be better. What about Jesus doing that work in us instead of us trying to do it ourselves and trying to build ourselves up, pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps and be better. Jesus wants to do that in us, but he wants to put to death what's deadly. So what things, what actions, what habits in our life are deadly and not life-giving? What takes us away from God instead of leading us closer to God? St. Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Jesuits, he gives us these rules for discernment. And so many of the rules for discerning these actions in our lives have to do with what's bearing good fruit and what's bearing bad fruit in my life. Well, if something's bearing bad fruit, then we need to cut that off at the roots, right? So some practices in Lent can be, like Deacon Rick talked about this weekend, practices that we continue for the rest of our life like real vices that need to be uprooted through the sacrament of confession, through good work, allowing Jesus to do that work in us, through that sacrifice that comes, so that we can give that up for the rest of our lives. So if somebody's struggling with alcoholism, it's not like I just give up alcohol for Lent and then I go right back into the addiction. No, some things need to be cut out and uprooted for the rest of our lives. But other things can be sacrificed for the sake of bearing fruit and, and experiencing something that is life-giving. So Something that was so freeing for me was to hear that, what if we're just struggling to have enough sleep? And I know for me, I don't have any children, so I don't have kids keeping me up, but what if the reason I'm getting enough sleep is because I'm spending so much time kind of binging social media or just kind of numbing out on social media before I go to sleep? So the small sacrifice would be to not use my phone, not use social media right before I go to bed. But then the huge gift that would come would be more sleep and would be more just like, life that I would receive from that action. I practiced that one, one year in seminary was just trying to get more sleep. And it was beautiful because I actually had more of myself than to give to God. And he had a greater ability to pour his life into me. So consider this Lent, maybe instead of, you know, just chocolate, like the typical, you know, giving up chocolate or like one type of pop, Dr. Pepper, not Mountain Dew or something like that. Consider, okay, great. Those things, chocolate, alcohol, whatever that might be, different types of food can be good fasting. What's underneath it? What's deadly in my life? What's not bearing good fruit? And what can I either root out or increase in my life to bear good fruit? Because what Lent is, is a desert preparation for the glory of Easter. Just like a desert needs to be dry so that the rains can water it. Just like Jesus had to die so he could rise from the dead. So too, do all of us need to have that experience of being open to receive. So let's consider that together this Lent and hopefully prepare for a wonderful and beautiful Easter. See you soon.